Hi everybody, Chris here at The Craft Cabin and today we are going to learn how to make this super cute little needle felted cottage. So to start with, for your centre part you can use roving to make up the body but it's quite hard to judge size and it also uses up a lot of roving. So what I use is a bit of styrofoam which I've actually cut off a wreath I didn't need. Uh, you can use a ball shape or an egg shape or whatever you want for the centre. Alternatively, you can use a ball of wool. Now, both of these things, they don't change much in size. So what you start with is what you get, which is quite nice if you're new to needle felting. Um, and just kind of reduce the cost a little bit as well. So to start with, we are going to get our styrofoam shape and we're going to start making the cream body of our house. So we get our bit of roving here, cream or white or whatever colour you want your house and I'm going to pull it apart, never cut your roving because it's great having all the wispy ends. And I'm going to start lay with laying it over your top, your bottom, whatever you want to call it and bringing it down either side like that. I'm going to get my needle felting tool and just start putting that in. Don't forget to do your corners as well as you go. If you needle felt them more they'll be more rounded. If you needle felt them less they'll be roundy. So I have loosely attached my first little bit here and I have brought it over the top and around. So when I put the next bit down to cover these bare bits I want the grain of the roving to go in the same direction so whether you go up and around that way or if you turn it over if I go up and around that way. I'm going to just spread it out a little bit so it's not too bulky and I'm going to lay it over here. So when you pull your length you want it going from about here lengthwise so it covers around and to back to about here. You can always add more with needle felting but it's hard to take away so don't go too bulky on when you're adding bits on. Now, and now I'm going to felt this bit.
so I have made sure to get my edges nicely in just that when you sit it down they don't they don't bulge out I have covered evenly so there's a little spot here that isn't covered and the same on this side so what I'm going to say is this is going to be my roof so in order to make the roof peak the way it does underneath I don't know if you can see there so I've created on top of my square there is a long triangular shape of roving and this adds the gable ends onto your little house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the end that's a little bit bare because I'll be adding a lot here and get more of my cream roving. I'm not going to be too shy with this and I'm going to roll around and make a little wad and that's going to go on and then I'm going to add another bit that's a little bit narrower and another bit on top of that. See there. So as we worked up the roof of the cottage you can see here I've kept my sides very straight these are going to be the gable ends and this point here I have nicely brought up the top so if you find that it looks a little bit separate your top half from your bottom if you lay a piece of roving just bring it over a short section and felt that in and do the same on the other end this part here won't be visible so you don't have to worry too much about that so on next to our roof, so what you're going to do is get a piece of grey or brown or black or whatever colour you want roving. You are lay it out like that. So this is going to be the section for our shape of our roof. We are going to needle felt this centre part. From about here to here and then we are going to fold over and fold over and this will be the shape of our roof so we are doing the roof in two halves we're doing one this side and one this side so you're going to do half your roof and then you're going to repeat again and make another piece in the same size So I have felt that some of the sides are a little bit folded up just to keep them nice and sharp. I'm going to just hold it onto my roof of the cottage and just check if that's the right size. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to repeat this and do another piece in the same. And there we have it, the two halves of our roof. So if I hold up here, I'm just gonna have a little look and see that it's all working. Yeah. So when I put on the roof, I don't like to put it very flat down like that, because it leaves it very rounded up here. So I'm gonna bring the roof up slightly higher. So first of all though, we're gonna lay our two pieces out, butting against each other, like so. And we're going to get A piece of rail being just slightly longer than your roof and this is going to be the ridge tiles along the top so you want a fat enough piece right about there and we are going to twirl it like so and lay it down holding either end 
I don't want to flatten the twirl too much so I'm just going to kind of run it up either side to start with and then giving it a Now for the ends I'm just going to give them a little twirl and tuck under. Now here you don't want to go too tight and cut it in. You want to leave a little bit of it sticking over. And do the same on the other end. So this is flattened out slightly on me, so what I'm going to do is push it in a little bit and felt because I want it to stand a bit proud. Now, so I lift that up and then, as I said earlier, when you put it onto your roof, Gonna lift ever so slightly so it's not falling flat and rounding like that. So I'm gonna hold it there and I'm just gonna check all sides, making sure it's even, making sure it's coming out the same same amount as the other side. And you can see there I got a little bit lopsided. Back to here. Oh, there we go. So to attach on the roof, I'm only going to needle felt in this section here because I want this to stay st sticking out and not folding over. And the same at the bottom. Uh, I don't want it flattening down. I want a little kick on the, f on the, s the roof. So I'm going to lay it flat and I'm just going to, using the mat to brace against, flipping it back and forward. Yeah. So that looks good. So at the ends I can see it's still just rounding a little bit more than I'd like here. So I'm going to just go straight through attach the ceiling to itself, the roof to itself just slightly. And that gives me a little bit more of a point. leaving my front sticking out and my bottoms stick, sticking out. So to add the chimney on, what you're going to do is you get a bit more of your grey or brown or whatever colour you chose roving for the, from the roof, like that. We're going to wrap it around a finger or pen or whatever you have handy to get a cylinder shape, like so, and pull that off. You pinch the bottom and hold that. That is going to be our 
chimney shape. So you're going to felt this, turning it quite fast as you go, so it doesn't flatten out or it doesn't go square on you. And you're going to keep going. So you'll be left with a tail down here where you've been holding on and loose as well at the top. So at the top we are going to make, flatten it out and make a little divot so that the smoke can be attached into it so it's not attached to the outside and very visible. So you just work the centre a little bit. Doesn't have to be a very big divot in the, in the top. And then just neaten all your loose hairs up. Yeah. So I'm going to attach it on first, and I'm going to choose a likely spot. So there's a bit of a bit of a dent there. So because I'm adding a bit more roving, I wanted to go in there so I'm gonna just have a look you want to check making sure it all looks all right like that so I'm only going to attach the base of the chimney I'm not going to attach this top part here because then it'll be very flat to it and I want it sticking out slightly And don't forget to attach in at the back as well. So where you add this on might be a little bit lumpy, so I'm just gonna brush out where the joints are so it's not quite so obvious I've added in a piece in. And I'm careful here, if I keep going down, I'm going to attach the roof. So I'm going to lay that on the side of my foam and just felt it in that way. Brushing out so there's no extra lumpy bits. that feels good and secure and that is my chimney attached. To add the smoke here so what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of roving in your cream and you want it quite short so otherwise if you look at that it just falls over all on its own otherwise so I'm going to put that a little bit thick and I'm going to twist the end so it makes it easier to felt in. And then when you put it to your chimney, you're going to work into the divot you had previously put on. So you're going to lay it across and push in a little bit and keep going and then bring it back and push in a little bit more. So if you find it's still a little bit long and it's sort of falling over on you, keep doing that and it'll get shorter and shorter as you flip back and forwards. And there's our smoke there. So for our, for our door, we're going to get a little bit of, I'm going to go with the blue door, a bit of blue roving. And similar to what we did the chimney, I'm just going to make a little cylinder shape. Just because I want a wad there. So I'm going to carefully felt the centre. Just to get it held on and I can move my fingers out of the way. And then we're going to, starting on the bottom, I'm going to make a flat bottom. Just by gently pushing up with my felting needle. And I think you can do square, you can do whatever you want, but I think I'd like to do curved top to my door.
keeping your sides smooth as possible because otherwise it will ruin your effect a little bit. So make sure you're, you're nice and flat so you can make it slightly more sticky out but just so it's all even and not too bumpy. And there we have it, that's my front door. So you can add a little handle or a little mailbox or even if you add a square of, of, of a dark colour here you can do a front step. I'm going to go on and add my window, so I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow and again I'm making a round piece. This is going to be a, a round window so I want to round it up as much as I can before I attach it on. I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to attach the centre so I can get my fingers out of the way. fairly thin piece here because we're going over this now to make the window frame and I'm keeping in mind that it's circular so I'm just brushing the edges in to make a nice circular shape. So that is my roundy bit of yellow. Now to add the window frame I'm going to choose a little bit of brown. So you, I had done black previous on this and just to mix it up. So I'm going to get a quite thin piece here like so. And, a little bit thin that. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl this really tightly. So I am going to, obviously the thinner bit you go, the finer your frame will be. I'm going to lay this across the top of my window frame like that and hold it in place with my two fingers and I'm just going to get the centre part in so I can let go. So I'm going to start on the left and I'm going to bring this around and I'm going to curl it again because it will undo itself. there and again just using my needle just gashing it where I want it to go and the same on the other side I'm gonna put my finger here just so I'm not pulling any of the, any of the work off I've already done and I'm gonna bring that to there Bring it all the way up. So with my ends now hanging down, because you need a little length, little length just so you can hold it, I'm going to cut these. just so that they are just crossing over each other you can see there and then I'm going to felt them in if you leave them very long you're adding on a lot of bulk to your your window frame so that's the round part of my window frame and now I'm going to grab my tails and I'm going to lay one across like that holding it in place
and gently. that and again so just on the far side I'm going to cut it off so it lines up with my outer frame on either side yeah. so for the second part of the window we are going to do the same thing we're going to twist our roving lay it down felt it in And then trim the ends. Just tidy it up. Yeah, there we have it, our first window. So other things you can add on are grass at the bottom, little flowers, and even a rose vine if you want. So the rose vine is done in a similar way with as with the windows. You twist your piece and attach it on. And then the grass is done by getting a little bit of green roving, laying it down along your bottom, like so, and then needle felting that on in lines. So I'm going to do this side of the house first and then lay another piece and do that side, another piece do that side, and then around your front door if you want two little bits just coming up either side. Don't have your, I wouldn't say have your grass too long unless you want it, so it's coming up to about that point there on your house. So to do your flowers then, you just get a little bit of whatever colour you want, like that. And then you are just going to make a little, a little knot, rub between your fingers till you have a bit like that. And loosely, you're going to felt that on. Don't want to flatten it too much, so I'm focusing again more on the edges like so. And you can dot those around or add them onto your vine. So there we have it. Enjoy your decorating and I hope you enjoyed making your very own needle felt house. Thank you and have a lovely day. Bye.